I heard so far a lot of uh, fighting for power's sake, and you know, by that argument, uh, we should be fighting the EU. Um, my question is, what are some specific things that you see that we could fight over uh, as the American people, like something that the American people would actually feel worth fighting over? You can point to specific issues that the United States could end up fighting China over. For example, one of those islands in the Spratlys, maybe over Taiwan, maybe over the islands in the East China Sea, and he pointed to the Korean Peninsula. Your question was whether we could get the American people exercised enough that they would be willing to fight in those specific situations. And I think that the United States is so good at threat inflation and fear mongering <laughs> that we'd have no problems with that issue. Robert Daly. <laughs> Robert Daly, are to you respond. joining us out of the argument? I'm, I'm less. I'm a little less certain that we could convince Americans to die for uninhabitable rocks in a part of the uh, part of the world that they can't find on a globe. John, I have something. I mean, Peter I, Brooks. I, I think you know, my colleague John has uh, you know laid laid it out uh, quite well. But I mean, for instance, look at the South China Sea contingency. Uh, if the China were to build these airfields and ports and start sending um, warships into there and controlling. Uh, controlling the transit through that part of the world. I mean, that's a threat to our vital national interests. $1.2 trillion in U.S. trade, the movement of American warships to the Persian Gulf. Uh, I mean, this is, this is something that could happen. Ch China could strangle Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea, either allies or partners of the United States, by cutting off the flow of oil that comes through the Malacca Strait and goes to, to, goes to those countries, 80% of their energy. So the, there are very much potential threats, besides the Korean Peninsula and other things, potential threats, strong threats to American national interests that okay. could lead to, um, lead to war. Kevin Rudd, very I think, quickly. Um, look, to agree with Peter, there is a range of things that you can see around the region where conflict could erupt. You really can. Those of us who have watched this carefully over many, many years, our argument and why we differ from our friends opposite is as follows. That we believe that there is a way through these challenges, difficult and as hard as an uneven a course as it may be, which is to be able to negotiate through strength. No one is arguing that the United States of America should go to a negotiating table in weakness. That is not the argument either of the US or its allies. But as Kennedy once said, JFK, uh, we should never, ever um, negotiate out of fear, but we should never fear to negotiate. And so on these intractable problems, which seem to be intractable, they may take years and decades to work their way through. But our argument, our core argument, is that national political leaders and diplomats, backed up with sensible statecraft, can make a real difference and not yield to what John has confirmed as his ultimate thesis is a determinist view, which is it's beyond our control, China's rising, the US is here, they're going to run into each other, either the US capitulates, China capitulates, or there's war. That's the three-ended result. We have a radically different view. All right. What I